Let's say the funding ratio. Now that one is even more assumptions based. In the previous example, if I show you that, the numerator is a real live number. Once you, something is deemed as eligible HQLA, it goes in that portfolio, you add up that portfolio, that's the numerator, X million pounds or dollars or euros or any currency you like. Uh, when I get to the NSFR, both the numerator and the denominator are assumptions because I have to determine what my available amount of stable funding is, ASF, and I have to divide that by my required amount of stable funding, RSF, and the guidance from Basel assigns ASF and RSF factors to each product type. Numerator divided by denominator has to be 100% or above. So the NSFR is, um, is even more assumptions based. And if you look at the next slide, those are the ASF and RSF factors for NSFR. Now, managing a balance sheet in practical terms to these two metrics isn't an exact science. It's difficult to land a balance sheet on a precise LCR or NSFR number. So in practice, each bank will assign a minimum level above the regulatory minimum that allows for volatility in LCR and NSFR, and they will have other metrics that they use to manage the balance sheet to. LCR and NSFR are regulatory metrics, which is why every bank calculates and reports them and adheres to their minimums. But in terms of managing a balance sheet and, and planning purposes and funding purposes and funding planning purposes, uh, you need other metrics to work to, your customer loan deposit ratio, your concentration, etc because these are assumptions based. They don't necessarily tell you a full picture or even a clear picture of your current actual liquidity position. They're very assumptions based. So we manage to LCR and NSFR insofar as we stay above regulatory minimums and our own internal minimum for those two metrics. But in terms of practical managing the balance sheet from a cash management perspective, we'll have other metrics that we need to work to.